Hey y'all, here OS Reviews. Today we are unboxing and taking a first impressions look at the Amazon Kindle Scribe. This is the largest Kindle ever, measuring 10.2 inches diagonally. It's a giant e-ink display, which you can use for both writing as well as reading alike. A form factor that has become more popular in recent years, first introduced by Sony with their digital paper, and then other competitors including Remarkable, in addition to Huawei, Xiaomi, Books, Onyx, Kobo, have all entered the space, so it makes sense that Amazon is now making their own version to compete. But a larger e-ink display also comes at a price, both in terms of portability, but also this one will retail for around $340 for the base model, which comes with 16 gigs of built-in storage and the aka basic pen, but that can stretch to 420 bucks if you're getting the premium pen that also has up to 64 gigs of built-in storage. So it's definitely pricey by Kindle standards, but it's actually very comparable to those other aforementioned larger e-tablets. It's also worth mentioning that Amazon frequently has trade-in offers just because it's a larger company. So you can often trade in an older Kindle for up to 20% off the purchase of a new one, in addition to a extra gift card, which is actually a really good deal. And now puts the price closer to somewhere around $280 when you are shopping around. It has one of the highest resolutions at 300 ppi that is higher than the Remarkable and many of the competitors, in addition to having a backlight so you can also read in the dark. It's also a function that the Remarkable 2, for instance, is missing along with the Sony and Fujitsu models, so this will be good for both daytime as well as nighttime alike. The pen itself, both the basic and premium, are both using a Wacom. EMR technology, which requires no battery to operate, awesome. Because it has built-in Wi-Fi, you are able to also access a basic web browser, which is one extra feature that the Remarkable 2 has stripped out of its OS. The entire device comes in at under one pound. 0.93 to be precise, which is pretty light for something that is about the size of an iPad Pro uh, when accounting for some of the extra bezels to hold onto the unit. The packaging though is very basic, especially for such a premium Kindle. In fact, we can call it flagship grade for Amazon standards. Really, it's in the same cardboard style as their cheaper Fire 7-inch tablets, for example. And in my case, at least, it came in just a small Amazon cardboard box without any cushions or anything like that. So it was kind of flopping around a little bit. So presentation is one area where maybe uh, they could put in a little bit more attention into. Some of the other specs here are reiterated. Very long battery life because of the e-ink technology. Everything here is going to be in black and white. It almost looks like printed paper. And the beauty of e-ink is that it doesn't actually use any power unless the pixels are being changed. It's worth noting that this particular unit though is not waterproof unlike the Kindle Oasis for instance which was their previous flagship grade Kindle that has a much smaller display by contrast. So we can peel back the perforated lip there on the top and then just get access to the tablet which is indeed just super slim in this paper packaging which is definitely eco-friendly. Uh, we can then pull this tab out, and so on the side we have some replacement nibs. So there are five of these included in this container. So the stylus, even though of course it doesn't have actual ink, uh, it will wear down as you start rubbing that plastic over the display. And typically, depending on how much you write, these should last for at least a couple of months. But once they wear down, you can then replace it with one of the options here and then pick up more once you're out. It should cost just a few bucks and there's also a tool there for picking that out from the pen and replacing those nibs. Very similar to other Wacom stylus that we have seen, whether it's the Surface or other devices. Here we have just a Type-C cable for charging and then the stylus is wrapped in a tissue paper. Uh, the actual pen itself does feel, even though it's the basic pen, still quite premium and weighted. It has a slight texture to the pen, which is this soft touch rubber material that feels quite grippy, and there's a bit of an indent, which makes it a bit more comfortable to hold when you are writing, which is good. And it does feel quite ergonomic, similar to a pencil here on first impressions. There is no clip, though, on the other side. It's a basic Amazon logo. The premium pen is exactly the same in terms of build and also sensitivity and technology. The only difference is on the back there is an extra eraser tip, although you can also access the eraser function in the software. So then we have just the Kindle itself, and that is it. So extremely simple packaging. Uh, we do have a hello message. It says Kindle Scribe, and this just documents how to replace the tips when they run out. 
So again, made of this tissue paper that we can unwrap and we have just the scribe itself. It is indeed very well built here on first impressions, a touch thicker than the Remarkable 2, but also made out of a pretty premium feeling glass on the top there, along with a full aluminum unibody frame on the rear. We have some soft touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on a surface or desk. You can purchase optional cases and folios to protect it. The side here just features a Type-C port, and you also have just a dedicated power key. And that is it. So there's no additional controls on the right-hand side, nor is there on the top. So there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, for instance, although there is built-in Bluetooth. So if you're listening to audiobooks or music, you can use wireless headphones. Now, maybe one hardware feature that would have been nice to find, but is also missing on the Remarkable, is a page turn button. So some of the older ebook readers back in the day had those. The stylus, when not in use, can also be attach magnetically onto the side of the unit. As you can see there, it's a pretty strong magnet. And indeed, it's a matte texture, which is paper-like. It provides some resistance when you're writing. So e-paper displays, by default, without the glow light turned on, it's actually going to be easier to read when there is sunlight hitting on it compared to conventional LCD or AMOLED displays, which are harder to see when there is light. Here's a quick size comparison with a kind of typical six inch Kindle. So you get the idea of the size difference with this massive 10.2 inch display. So it looks like there's about 50% charge out of the box for this unit. It's a little bit funny that they're calling it first gen when there's really only one gen out right now. You can also see that the backlight has kicked in a little bit here in a darker environment, which does look quite good. And we also have the virtual keyboard. Fire OS is still technically running on Android, but it's just been heavily customized and locked down. Because this thing does have a backlight, there is technically a small gap if we're looking super closely between the glass here on top and the e-ink display underneath. It'll go through the standard prompts like on any other Kindle telling you whether you want to sign up for Goodreads. Uh, there is also a three-month trial of Kindle Unlimited if you are purchasing a new Kindle. So you can think of this as Amazon Prime or Netflix for the reading world where you can read a lot more books and content, kind of like streaming. You don't actually own the books, but during this subscription period, you can access a wider catalog without purchasing on a per book basis. So this is typically a $10 deal per month. One other thing that you will observe is that there's another offer for Audible for separate audiobooks. Audible, of course, has a wider catalog as well, so they have partnered with Amazon and their Kindle products. But anyways, once those offers are done, you can then see the main regular Kindle UI, and we can check out different options in the Kindle store, what is popular for you to read, other files that you want to add. We are able to drag down from the top to access the notification tray where we can change things like the brightness, or you can of course turn this completely off based on your surroundings. And there is a auto brightness ambient sensor as well. We can change the warmth of the light, so the LEDs can be made to be a cooler or a warmer glow depending on your preferences, just like on the paper white devices from Amazon. Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth, airplane modes can all be triggered on the top, very similar to any other standard Kindle. Under settings, you can find some additional pen controls, including shortcuts that you may want to trigger. Uh, the basic pen does not have any additional kind of clips or buttons on it, so you can only really remap this if you're using a third-party Wacom pen that has a button or the premium pen, and you can press on it to instantly highlight, erase, or create a sticky note. Uh, but again, this thing is compatible with any standard Wacom EMR stylus. That includes pens from the Remarkable, from most other say Samsung Galaxy S Notes can all work on this display because it's using the same technology, which is good. And we can also take a look at the main screen, which is allowing us to create notebooks from the bottom. For now, if we just select on a regular, let's say, notebook-like experience, I can tap on Create. It tells us how to create notes here on Kindle by sliding left and right between pages. And it does look pretty convincing. There's also some brief reminders about how to minimize or show additional settings for writing tools, but you can redo, undo, as well as highlight different text and then view them back, save them onto your account, and then view them on a computer, things like that. Now, despite having, again, capacitive as well as pen input, it is quite good at palm rejection. Uh, so you can rest your hand on here and begin to say something like hello, and you can tell that 
It doesn't really mess around with the accidental touches from your palm either. It's really as sensitive as something like a Galaxy S Pen on a Note device or any kind of Surface device as well. So you can tell that it has almost no latency at all when it comes to writing. And that is definitely an improvement here in the newer generations of e-paper, tablets, and writing devices. So quite good in that regard. I can also tap on the eraser function here and erase just a little bit of the writing as you can see there. There's still a bit of a small portion that you can see until it clears that region, but it doesn't actually refresh the entire page, only that small section can be selected. Uh, so overall, it doesn't become too distracting either. So of course we'll be doing a lot more testing on this unit and seeing how it really stacks up in terms of real world performance and we'll be coming out with a more complete review soon. Uh, but that has been just our unboxing and first impressions look at the Amazon Kindle Scribe. Again, this is not going to be a product for everyone out there, but especially as this category blossoms, hopefully that means the cost will continue to come down and it can't be still practical. Again, if you're looking for just a digital notebook to replace actual paper to be more eco-friendly, and in a way freeing yourself from the distractions if you were using an iPad or an actual laptop and good for writers I'd say as well as for reading. So come back for our full review but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been our first look at the Kindle Scribe.